Hey, I'm JD. How, how you doing? Welcome to my channel. Please hit like, please subscribe, please pass the subscription along to someone else so they can subscribe. And what do we have here today? We've got the Bride of Frankenstein. Actually, this is the uh, the Bride of Frankenwatch. So this is sent back to me because um, for some reason it was grinding while it was winding. So I'm going to have a quick look at this watch and see what I can do. You notice today my fingernails are shorter because I clipped them all for this video. Normally I would have my fingernails for guitar would be extra long. So anyway, in the last week I've been making a lot of flight simulation videos and enjoying it actually. It's been pretty darn good, but I can see right away the problem with this watch is that it is the pallet stone is in the other side of the banking, or in the other side of the fork. See if I do that, and it goes boing, boing, boing like that. That means somehow that jewel got on the wrong side. And this is an old watch where they did not have the dual roller tables that prevented that. So if I cough or anything in the middle of this video, I apologize because I am in dire straits when it comes to my cold. And that's why I haven't worked on watches in the last two weeks because I've had this nagging cold for as long as well at least two weeks so i know to repair this or work on it properly i'm gonna have to remove the hands and and stuff like that there so so let's see if i can set this watch properly um <clears throat> it is an old watch i did a video on this one when, when i worked on it and repaired it and it's in pretty good condition right now it's the problem is the owner said it's grindy when it winds well the bigger bigger problem is it's basically on the wrong side of the uh the, the pallet fork is the wrong side of the jewel so so that is not going to help at all <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to replace or remove the hands from the uh from the jewel it's not a lever set watch even though there's a gap there for the potential of it being lever set um, but it's not lever set and I had this thing set up very nicely and uh, with the face nice and clean and everything so I think I may have to put some gloves on for this one. So before I work on the watch the first thing I'm going to do is get a piece of plastic I can put over the top here while I lift the levers. So I have a, a plastic bag I got in one of my many supplies that I have and all I'm going to do here is I don't need a massive piece of plastic but I do need a piece of plastic. So, so what I'm going to do here is just cut a square out of this and I'll, I might use the plastic for something else in the future but that's for now I'll just cut the square out of this and put this aside in my <clears throat> many resources of tools and stuff and I just need to trim the edges so I can get two pieces of plastic that I'll use in the future that's one and then the second one here sorry about showing you all this is like Mr. Dress Up how do I make a boat out of a milk carton there's a question that has never been answered properly, right? Come on, stop it. Now, I still have a <clears throat> ridiculous cold that uh, just doesn't seem to want to go away. I believe I got it from the IT guy at work because I remember him walking around coughing his butt off. Um, and he was the IT guy in the company I'm working at right now. And he decided to stay at work and g give everybody else the cold. So thank you very much. And as I said before, I had it all through the Christmas break, which was no fun at all because I really wanted to have a good time and I couldn't go out anywhere and see anybody through the break because I had this stupid cold. So now just to remind you, on a weekly basis, usually Sunday evenings, usually around 8 o'clock, we're going to have the watchmaking guys get together and <clears throat> we're going to have a chat a little about watchmaking. A boot! A boot watchmaking, as they say in Canadian. And I don't know, we don't say a boot. You guys think we do, but we don't. I'm saying you guys because I think the larger audience I have is probably American. Anyway, <clears throat> a boot. So I'm prepping my glasses. And once again, as I completely advertise for this company, this is the Airy Watch Loop. So this watch loop is around 125 bucks Canadian, I think. Maybe maybe around 100 bucks US or something. But it has your, you can tighten this up a bit, and it's got the flip over loop, and the loop is, a, is in, uh, I guess it's a high quality glass in that loop, and you just grab the frame of your glasses, and I've got uh, 
<clears throat> lenses on the bottom were this these glasses were specifically made for watchmaking. The lens on the bottom is a three times. The lens on the top is a 1.25 or 1.3, I think, and it's for watching my computer screen. I just have old man eye vision. And then I'm able to just flip this loop down and do some pretty precise work on watches with this loop. So so there you go, right? So and I think I need a little bit of lighting here. So I'm going to just bring up the intensity of my light here. And so the first thing I'm going to do is pop the hands off this watch. The hands were off it before, but uh, i got to pop them off again. So I set them at the 12 o'clock position and just go straight up like that. And the hands come off without a problem. And I'll set these hands aside and I'll use the case itself to hold the hands. Uh, they won't scratch the, the case at all. They're just way too light. And <clears throat> these small hands here, I've got other hand pliers or pl pl to ply to pry the hands off plier priors whatever you want to call it you want to make sure that you, it's equal pressure on both sides uh, I could put the plastic over this too I don't know if it's necessary but I'll do it anyway so you do this on both sides and then you go straight up and then that comes off and there's no stress on the fourth wheel pivot by doing it that way and I just set that aside <clears throat> so that's the perfect way to do it there's my new little piece of plastic um, and it's, I'm just using plastic from your normal plastic bag plastics that you get when you buy parts and stuff. And it's uh, pretty good. It's a very, uh, it's, so, it's a softer plastic, so it's not going to cause me any issues. Put the tools back. I'll have to show you my, my tool bin. I'll just, just pick the camera up and go look at the tool bin for a second there. There's my tool bin right there, so as you can see. And here in my tool bin, I've got the scissors back here. I've got some crazy ass tools here for doing various watch stuff, but and you guys know what these tools are. Got a bunch of pin vices here, pin vices or whatever you want to call them, vices of different types and sorts. Got the cleaning brushes here. I've got the uh, these little jobby doohickeys from a that's from a, a hobby store, and I use the curved one here for resetting wheel positions on full plate watches. Um, I've got these hand removers that are that are very nice. They're they're, they're perfect because they're broad, wide, and of course I got bench keys, three bench keys. I made this little rig here. I've got my hand reinstalling device, and here I got another pair of tweezers. And back behind here I've got uh, a case opener. I've got another brush back here, a pokey pokey tool, and back here I've got more of a professional case opener. Uh, but I've got a more professional, professional case opener in the back, right? And, th and then I've got like leftover crap back here, so scissors and stuff like that. So that's the thing I normally do, and I'm just working on, on cleaning these things up in the future. Got some of the some of these holders here. I gotta fix this box and clean this up in the future, and of course my screwdrivers are right here, and, <clears throat> and that's my microscope and some other stuff. But back there. Back there is where I've got all my supplies and my other tools and stuff. I've got tons of tools, so this is just the gotta reach it really quick stuff. So that's it. I'm also working off a three three screen monitor now. That's monitor number one, and you can see yourself. That's monitor number two, and monitor number three with a microphone hanging down here for recording, and then my watch bench. I've got it pretty clean these days. Um, this watch is the Billy watch in the back. I got to give it back to Billy, but. All my oils, like I said, are not in this area. Now I put the glove on the hand that's going to do most of the touching. Um, while I have the uh, the hand, or while I have the hands off the watch, I'm going to just grab a chunk of Rodico here, and I got some in a jar that's fairly clean, and I just want to take off a mark I can see right here. Now that wasn't me who put that on there, owner. Because I cleaned off any any prints that were showing when I prepped the watch before I delivered it, so that was a bonus mark from somebody else. So, so I'm going to clean these off here. Uh, <clears throat> again, like I apologize if I cough in your face here. I don't mean to. So shout out to the guys, to uh, the guys that were on the talk the other day. So we're going to do this again probably on Sunday. So it's, uh, it should be a lot of fun. I'm going to get out my, my nice gel pad here so I can show you that I have a nice gel pad. <clears throat> here it is here. That way I can put this down and 
Remove the back. Now the first thing I have to do is take the power off the watch when I get the watch out. But I've got to pull, I've got to pull the crown out first, and I, I do that by holding the watch like this, and I hold the crown with these the thumb and finger. And I usually reverse it just a bit like that, and then I pull it out like that. So now the crown is out, and the watch is relatively loose. Um, I've got to get rid of these stupid things. Eh? Like I want to fix the box because I like the box, but I got to get them out of the way so I can actually do work, work, work. Grab the appropriate size screwdriver. This screw is already out of the way, and these these are half turn screwdrivers, so this one is also out of the way. The watch is ready to fall out, I think, as I can see. Look at that, fell right out. That is a thing of beauty. <clears throat> so there it is there. Now, I want to take the power off this watch because if I try to take the uh, balance off without removing the power from the watch, this thing is going to spin like crazy, right? So i got to look and see how that's going to be done. Um, I might want to remove the face first before I remove the power from the watch. Not sure. Let me have a look here on the edges. Because um, it has, it should have a a spring I can play with to remove the power from the watch. Where is that? There it is right there. So that little device right there is a it's like a switch and that will disengage the um, the uh, what's it called? The mainspring barrel. So I've got to get the right <clears throat> I gotta get the right device in here. And I think I can do this because the the actual um, Put it in the winding mode like that and then this is a, the hard part well it's in the winding mode I've got to hold it in the winding mode well I use a screwdriver or another device usually a screwdriver is good enough <clears throat> to push up on this thing here on this jobby doohickey here and then slowly release the watch and this thing has been wound all the crap so the owner decided to wind the crap out of it, so I'm giving him shit right now for doing that. So, But he's a good guy in general. So, He's got a doctorate degree, but not in watchmaking. <clears throat> so i got to take the power off, so I'm just rolling it down as I do this. Uh, and successfully, hopefully, take the power off the mainspring. This mainspring had good power on it uh, before. Um, and I know that his problem was that the he said it was kind of gritty when it wound so that's the power is completely off the mainspring right now and now I'll put this back down here on the gel movement <coughs> holder and a few things you could do here so I'd like to I'm gonna have to take the face off to make sure that the movement is not grinding too much when it winds right so that's that's a necessity right but the balance is also on the wrong side, right, of the, 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 the impulse jewel is on the wrong side of the balance of the, uh, the what's, it, what's it called, the pallet fork. So it's on the wrong side of the pallet fork, which means it's banking against the pallet fork. If I were to just wind this back up again, and I know when I wind it, let me just put a little wind on it, see if it grinds at all while I'm winding. And if it doesn't grind while I'm winding, then there's another, then there's not a problem, right? So that's perfect for setting the time, right? And then if I push in, I don't feel any grinding while I'm winding the watch. I'm sorry, but I don't. So let me just take the power off the watch again. <clears throat> this watch has been serviced and cleaned and everything else. So I'm just going to do what I did before. I got to push down on the on the bench key like this. Then put a little bit of winding power on it, which takes the stress off of this device here. Hang on a second here. Something funky going on. Just like that, and then push up on this, and then that lets me take the. I put a couple winds on it, so lets me take those out. Uh, <clears throat> I think I'll just take the balance staff off. I got to take it off anyway, and I'm going to hold that where I'm going to go get my my very nice balance staff holder. I'll be back in a sec.
All right, I'm going to use this one today. And what I want to do is just measure the distance between that screw and where the balance is. I think it's got to go back a little further. That should do right there. Yeah, that's perfect. And that way, when I take the balance off, I can just rest it on this piece here, and there shouldn't be a problem. I think there shouldn't be a problem, but <clears throat> hopefully there isn't a problem. So I'm going to take get rid of the bench key here. And I just, I, so I think Chris Spinner said, hey, I don't have bench keys. I was like, what? How can you be a watch repair dude and not have a bench key? That is crazy. That is just crazy. So I take the screw off here and I can hold that screw in this little tiny piece of Rodico I have on here, which is, <clears throat> I think, a brilliant idea. Oh, even though others might not, I think it is. Get a smaller screw here and just set it. Wedge this just a bit. <clears throat> I got to take this off. Off. I can't remember if I if I had to put a shim on this one or not. Je ne remember pas. That's in there pretty good, actually. There we go. That's relatively loose. Now I should be able to lift this straight up. There we go. No, no shim. <clears throat> now I'm going to put this balance down very carefully here. Like that. There we go. <clears throat> there, that's perfectly positioned and in good shape. Just sitting down there, nice and comfy. I got this on AliExpress, by the way. They're pretty good because you can adjust them. Um, I had a pad on it, glued on it before for the balance, but I don't really need that. So I'm just going to put that aside. I'm going to put the balance aside so I don't accidentally inadvertently hit it with my hand or anything. So, And in here is where the, the problem was. Let me turn off the light here for the camera. There we go. And here is where the problem was, is that the balance, the, the balance, the pallet fork here, and I'm tired so I may get terms wrong, but the pallet fork was on the wrong side of where the impulse jewel was. So that was causing a problem, but what he was saying is that the watch is grinding too much when you wind it, and I didn't understand that. So <clears throat> let me take a look at the mechanism to see if there indeed is a problem. you got to trust your customer every now and then, right? Trust your customer. Did I say it loud enough? I think so. So i got to take off the screws that hold the face in. They're very small. You find them and then you grind them. I'm gonna have to make my put my chair down a bit and get deep and dirty here. <clears throat> put the eye loop down and now I can see what I'm doing. So, so usually I just loosen these off. If I take them off and I have to look on the bench to see where they fell, sometimes they fall out and I find them again. Just keep your elbows away from them because they'll stick to your elbows. So this is the Bride of Franken watch. So he brought me two watches to do work on. And this was the, the probably the easier of the two, but it's again another full plate watch, which are very painful to work on. So I don't know if there's a lot of people that do work on full plate pocket watches. Um, I'm one of them. And I don't mind working on them. I've got, I've got skills now that let me do this work without too much agony so I just try to lift the watch face off the watch here there we go that's off <clears throat> and I remember putting in a brand new a brand new jobby doohickey here all these things should work fine there should be no issue here at all but it may need oiling or tightening or something right because all of, he said that they're grinding which doesn't make any sense at all so I'm gonna wind this up just a little bit to see what kind of grinding he's talking about. Maybe there is some grinding going on that I know nothing about. Let me see if I can... So this is turning the watch to set the time and they're certainly kind of stuck here. And let me see where the guilty gear is. So if I remove <clears throat> the center gear here and this is the cannon pinion here and that should spin the cannon pinion around 
So then it does. So that spins the cannon pinion. It seems to be a little tight, but they are supposed to be relatively tight. So there doesn't seem to be too much of a problem here with the cannon pinion. Yeah. You hate to have to loosen the cannon pinion. I think it's fine actually. And you don't want to put any oil in the cannon pinion because of the way it grips, right? So I'm looking at its movement and I don't see any real problems with it. Let me see if it's because the cannon pinion actually has to grip as it turns. So maybe if I put a little tiny bit of oil in the cannon pinion, because it's still gripping enough to be able to make the hour the hour wheel turn around. So <clears throat> maybe a tiny bit of grease on that. I don't know. I don't think you should. I'm debating this here. You guys can can kick in here, but I'd, the way these old cannon pinions were made. Um, they were made to grip the edges, right, of the pivot on the center wheel. It is turning, so you can set the time. There's no issue there at all, right? So it does turn. I'm turning it right now, and it's a bit stiff, but it's turning fine, and it's able to set the time that way. I don't know. It seems like... Uh, Not absolutely sure if there's an issue here. So <clears throat> now if I push this inward, this is this inward pushing attaches these gears. Now that's nice and easy to turn, which tells me that the gears. This is for winding the mainspring. It tells me the gears um, on this side are fine. I could put a little bit of oil right in there to make that smoother. I know that <clears throat> this here, this screw here should be tight enough, and it is. So there's no problem there. And I could oil right there to make that move back and forth easier. So I'll do that, right, as a minimum. <clears throat> and then see if I can do any work at all on the cannon pinions. I'll be right back. All right, I am back in black. So I'm going to take my oiler here, and I'm going to jab it into this pithwood. This stuff just pisses me off. Jab it into the pithwood to clean it up a bit. I'm also going to make sure use some Rodico here to make sure there's no pithwood left on it. Um, and this is a really nice Bergeron 80, 2847 oiling system here. Uh, I remember I fixed one of these needed to be re-glued on I think. So one of these oilers here need to be glued on. So I'm going to use I think a grease that I have here, um, uh, not this one here, but this one here, it's yellow. So I could I think it might be D5, but I'm going to take some D5 here and I'm going to apply some D5 to the gears right here. I'm going to do this and then I'm going to turn it a bit and apply some more D5. It is getting a little stuck there, and I think it has to do maybe with this this here. I'm not absolutely sure. The gears on this are tricky, though. That's the cannon pinion. It's the weight on that cannon pinion. <clears throat> so I might take it off, and it's causing extreme pressure on this. So let me just get in here again with some more of this oil. Because I know when I was winding the watch itself, there was no real issue. And to allow this to slide back and forth, I'm going to put a little bit of oil here too. Like that. And that'll allow that to slide back and forth. And I think I will remove and have a look at that cannon pinion. Because <clears throat> it is pretty tight. So, 
<clears throat> and I'd like that to be a little looser. So let's, let me just turn this again. And I know that it's, it's fighting with the cannon pinion. That's why it's being difficult to turn, right? Yeah. Because the minute I disengage this and go forward with it, it's easy as crap to turn. It's just the cannon pinion engagement. So let me get my cannon pinion remover. So this is the tool we use to remove the cannon pinion. So I'm going to just take the cannon pinion out of the watch and just see if everything moves really nicely without it. So, so this tool here, you basically put this over the top of the cannon pinion and then you push down and it does that and grabs everything. So, so there's a double, kind of a double mouth on that. And you want to have, you want to make sure it's clear of any gears and stuff when you're doing this. We just go down here like that. I think it's good there like that and then I should be able to push down I need to get that all the way down here there we go that's the cannon pinion is now out now when I turn this the question is is it going to be like so easy to turn it's stupid and was it the cannon pinion all along right that caused the problem so turning it now is like smooth as butter so it's the damn cannon pinion that is tight as hell so now how do I loosen up the cannon pinion well the cannon pinion's got arms on it so if I look at this cannon pinion really closely right you can see it and on the sides if I can just drop it on my glove without it falling down on the sides of that cannon pinion if I move roll it just a bit you see an opening there that's that's an opening for the cannon pinion and those two ends are what tighten this down on the on the on the pivot right so I have to <clears throat> I'm gonna have to put a pin in there to actually broaden the cannon pinion if I look inside the hole of the cannon pinion yeah it's barely yeah, it's barely causing any pressure at all so Yeah, so that's, that's, yeah, I may have to, I may end up having to put some braking grease on the cannon pinion. And braking grease would allow that to turn and be a little less um, stiff, because I don't know if there's any way of actually loosening it up any other than doing that. I'm going to look under the microscope and see what it looks like, see how much clearance there is. So there's the cannon pinion under the microscope, so I just have to, look at that um, just to prove that I'm in the microscope there's my tweezers and this is the uh, what's it called something something 70 microscope so I'm going to look at that canopy what I want to do here is look through the hole and see if there's how much room there is in this cannon pinion if any right so I'm backing this off and focusing the microscope um, and maybe I'll just back off and show you with there. Now I can get a really good look at the cannon pinion from the inside. And <clears throat> yeah, I'm seeing the, um, I'm seeing, I'm trying to look and see if there's, if those, the uh, grabbing arms of the cannon pinion are inward too much or how do I deal with that, right? Now the good news is on the microscope, let me just back off here a little bit and show you. Um, here's the uh, microscope here. And I can use this arm to go up and down to actually look through the cannon pinion at various positions, right? So, so I'm looking down through it right now, and I can see the I can see the grabbing arms of the cannon pinion, where it actually grabs the watch, yeah, and it's sticking out a bit. So, yeah. So there is a chance that I can move those arms the other way. Yeah. Now if I put a needle in there, I might be able to sort of pound down on that cannon pinion and that would widen it up a bit. So I'm going to check and see what the probability of success is for that. Now if I look at my very famous watchmaker's book here, and it said, well, loosen the cannon pinion. Well, how do you do that? I'm trying to loosen cannon pinion with 
smooth taper pin. Canon pinion too tight. So that's <laughs> it's a pretty simple explanation on how to do that. All right, I'm looking at all the books I have. So these are not all the books, but Boulevard School Watchmaking doesn't tell me anything about doing the Canon pinion. I showed you this one already, which was the Watch Repairs Manual by Fried. This says smooth broached tapered pin to be used to widen it. Bench Practices for Watch Repairs. I looked at this very good book, it's mainly for making things. So the Practical Benchwork for Horologist book I have, I went in there and it said the same thing. That a smooth, smooth friction. It says that, let me just turn this around so you can see it. Um, I think it's right up here. Uh, let me see, uh, cutting edges on a, well, tightening uh, pinion, uh, yeah, you got to insert a, a steel brooch into the pin while you're tightening it. Where did I read about widening it? That was, I uh, printed in return. Let me see, yabba dabba doo, yabba dabba doo. Um, I had read it two seconds ago. Yeah. No, it just says a hard steel brooch should be inserted into the hole while you're tightening the cannon pinion. That's that way the cannon pinion doesn't squish down too much, right? Now, <clears throat> it doesn't talk about loosening it. Although the other one said, the other book said to loosen it. You just take the same smooth brooch and you push in on it. And hopefully that will loosen it. So I think I'll try to use a needle because I have a needle. I'll hold that needle in a pin vise, and I'll see if I can widen the cannon pinion that way. So there's a couple of things I can do with this cannon pinion. The first seems to be broaching it or use a smooth needle to go inside the cannon pinion and widen it just a bit. It also recommended that I was on the Watch Repair Talk blog to put a little bit of oil in there too, um, which would have the effect of loosening the cannon pinion as it turns, right? even if it's gripping too hard. And there are three sides to this thing. So this needle is not big enough to actually broach it. So I'm gonna look at my brooches and see if I've got anything. All right, I'm back with a vengeance. So I went down and I stole one of my wife's needles from her sewing set. So, so I'm gonna use this needle here. And as you can see, it, the cannon pinion, pinion does fit on this needle. So by slowly broaching this, I should be able to widen it just a bit. This is touchy. I'm not sure how much to widen it, but I know it needs to be done. Um, and it's just a matter of, it's a matter of friction, right? So, so I'm going to just tighten this needle here in my vise here. And now I'm just going to very carefully rotate this as I push it down. So I'm just rotating it ever so slightly as I push it down. So let me just go up a bit here so you can see this. And hopefully that loosens it up slightly, right? Because I don't want it loosened too much. Otherwise, it's not going to grip the center pinion. And I'm going to do it from both sides. I'm just gripping this like this and then turning it again. And that might be enough, folks. I've also read online where some people have said you can add a little bit of oil to the cannon pinion and that might do it too, right? So <clears throat> let me just push this cannon pinion back on again. Um, I like to do that, by the way, by using a stake. That way I get equal pressure and I'm not grabbing the pinion on the sides. So I'm going to get a stake from my staking set first to push that back on. So here's a stake from the staking set, and I just want to make sure that the cannon pinion here um, fits in here, not too too loose or too tight. So I just put that down inside like that, and while I'm trying to film here, I think the guys who I do the watch repair videos with would understand the complexity of trying to film this at the same time you're doing the work. So I just kind of push that on like that. And then I can now push down on the, the movement here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try it out first 
without any grease or anything and see how well this see how well this works so I'm going to just push this straight down um, I may have to do a little of alignment first but that went in place nicely now and I don't know whether that will be gripping too much still or what right I'm not sure where it sits uh, you know it has to go down to just a bit more a tad more I'm just going to grab this bench key here and turn this just a bit like that I just want to make sure the leaves are aligned properly and you don't want to push the the jewel on the other side out of the of the watch so there it's snapped in place now and if this is still too tight then I'll well, that feels a bit better actually and I think I will add a little tiny bit of oil to this cannon pinion and I read online that that's not a bad thing to do so because that just reduces the friction a little bit more um, <clears throat> and I'm going to use this grease because I don't want oil all over the place I'm going to put a little tiny bit of a little dab will do you in here and that will spread around without a problem <clears throat> and that might cure the problem that I had and this thing might swing around nicely now Let's see how well that works oh yeah look at that that's perfect that feels nice and loose plus I'm assuming it'll have enough grip to actually turn the uh, the cannon pinion when it needs to right so <clears throat> but that's nice. That feels good. It feels like it's the right kind of winding pressure on the watch. So when I press down like this and I wind the watch like this, no pressure there at all. I think I may want to put a little bit of oil on the inside of that pinion on the inside. So, <clears throat> and that would be the red stuff. I'll show you my oils later so and I gotta access it by pressing down so let me just get a closer close-up here for you see if I can just get this in a little bit closer uh, I apologize for not having the uh, a microscope or something like that I think I can get pretty darn close with this so kinda like that is not too bad right there right so I'm just gonna access there's a hole right in here this is, has a spring in it. it pops it up and then it allows me access to the gear down below which I want to put a little bit of oil on right and to do that I have to actually press in with the bench key and then this will free up that space right there so I can there we go so I can put the oil in there and now when I turn this like this let go of that and turn the cannon pinion that feels really good so this is uh yeah this is if the daughter of Frank and watch and just a little tiny bit of lube but I also widened it I think that may just solve the problem so everything else seems to be no no issue so I'll put the watch together again and see if see if I've had a good day so you can see in, in watch repair, every problem has got some kind of a solution, but every problem you really have to do your research, make sure you're looking things up properly, make sure you're not overdoing it. So I could have overbaked that little problem and actually ruined the watch if I didn't pay attention to what I was doing, right? But I did pay attention, so I think we're in good shape right now. So what I'll do is I'll just <clears throat> put the face back on the watch because I want to reassemble the watch. So I've got to put the face back on. Um, I, I'll wait till it's ticking and I'll put the hands back on once the watch is actually in the movement. So it's supported well within the movement. Um, so to put the face back on, I want to see where that, that minute hand is here. I want to make sure I put the, <clears throat> the hour wheel back on, right? And that should slide right over the top here without a problem. Now that's going to turn nicely now that that cannon pinion is turning nicely, right? So the hour wheel here, 
and there we go and that's on there let me make sure that it's meshing properly here yeah that's meshing properly and then I have to put the uh, yeah I need to angle everything I had a I had a uh, camera that was pointing differently but it's uh, I think the guys that do other videos have better camera setup so my camera setups for simulation are great <laughs> so I'm just looking for that for that where this goes down there it is there I think the pivot should show itself um, as this watch as the movement falls into place right yeah I can see the pivot there no problem so this should just go down without an issue and it does so there we go so now the face is down <clears throat> and while I'm down here down here I always always clean the face some more while I'm down here you can never have a face that's too clean right there's a couple of camps here one of them says leave it looking vintage and the other one says clean it up so it looks brand new <clears throat> I'm kind of on the on within both camps here I like to make sure it's nice and clean but I don't want it to make to look at to make it look stupid new right otherwise it's not really a vintage watch anymore right it's just a a new pocket watch so I'm going to tighten the uh, dial screws up here and get dial screw number one tighten that up and they don't have to be super tight because the dial's not going to fly off uh, but they should be tight enough to grip the uh, legs so one thing I haven't had to do in a long time is solder legs back onto a watch face so I got my soldering machine and all that so I may just do it for practice because you lose you can lose your skills um, if you haven't done something in a while <clears throat> even I haven't made a balance staff in a while so even that scares me now so so that's that and now I've got to recase the watch so this would go in the watch goes in upside down like this into the case so it goes like this um, I think it does anyway let me look again yeah and so I should be able to just pull it in and move the camera back a bit here and then up I wish I had Chris Spinner's patience here and actually doing the watch work and putting this stuff back together again right so just hold that like this, and am I on the right side here of the watch? Hopefully I am. Find the hole, as they say. Find the hole. I think I'm on the right side. Am I on the right side? Yeah, I'm on the right side. What the heck am I doing? Where is that hole? It's sort of sideways. It should go in exactly how it came out. Let me try that again down like this it's funny you got to get this this part of the watch has to go in there first before the other part will go in so I gotta align that up first Let me get my head down here so I can do some aligning why is it always harder why is it hard why is watch work so hard I can't do it like this because I'm just farting around with it and nothing's happening I'm on the correct side. I'm just being stupid here. <clears throat> Turn your camera off and then try it, right? Once it goes in, there we go. So I got that in at an angle like that. And now it'll push up like this without a problem. And now I can take a bigger screwdriver like this and tighten the back one first. I want to make sure this one is nice and tight. I believe the owner might have played with this too, by the way. And I'll have to ask him, did you play with the watch? No lying. Because when I took it apart, it seemed like these screws were out a bit too much. That's nice. It feels good. It's wound up all the way here. Alright, 
That's enough of a wind on it. I got to tell them not to wind it so your your wrist hurts after, right? And I just check inside here to make sure that the uh, yeah pallet fork is snapping back and forth, and I just need to put the movement <coughs> the uh, balance cock back in, and it should start ticking right away with any luck. And I put the hands on and test to make sure that there's no issues. So let me grab this from this side. So I want to enter the balance. I'm going to enter it this way and then, yeah, and then turn it in. So, so I'll go like this, lift that up nice and carefully. And then I want to take it from this side here, like that. And then get that in and then rotate it back like this. It should be ticking any second now. And there we go. <clears throat> Starting to tick. Fun in the sun. And while I put the balance back on, um, I usually use this tool here to keep the balance flat while I'm screwing it down. And then I want to make sure that there's no play here. I want to make sure that I don't have an issue with respect to this balance coming up while I'm tightening the screw. So. There we go. So now the watch is running, folks. And now it should be super easy to set this watch. Need to get it going here. It hasn't been going for a while, I don't think. Make sure everything is fine here. Yeah, everything looks good. Yeah, I'm going to re-oil the pivots. Maybe they don't need oiling, but I'm going to do it anyway. I think it hasn't been oiled in a little while. This watch has been away for a while. <clears throat> and the least bit of friction possible, the better the outcome, right? That's how it works in the world of watches. So and the heavier oil from the outside, inward, and it's a game of friction that you're playing with a watch. a pocket watch. Let me just stop this for a second. And then could have changed oilers there, but I scrubbed it up a bit, so. There we go. <clears throat> And that's running fairly well. We'll let that run overnight, but as I normally do, uh, put that oiler back. And I need to just put screwdrivers back so I can, don't have them all over the place. Right? And that was a free service because basically it was a free service. So the cannon pinion is loose right now, but not, it's loosened. It's not so loose that it won't grab be grabbed and turn the watch the uh, hour and minute wheel around but I got but I do have to test that to make sure that that works because the last thing I want is for that cannon pinion now to cause me a bigger problem <clears throat> which is not it's not too it's too tight or something like that right so, um, so I want to do that uh, I also wanted to put a little oil on top here on here I like to have the least amount of friction in this watch going around. So and that oil will not travel. It will go straight down into the watch. 
<coughs> so that shouldn't travel at all. So there we go. And if I just pull this out like this, back it up, pull it out, turn this, set the time, push it back in. That should have no problem running now. <clears throat> this is an old beast, this watch. Can't remember how old, but it is old. And just take the hands out here, the hands. I want to put the back on the watch now. And I'll let this thing run overnight. Just make sure there's no other issues that are coming up with this watch. Funny, I had it ticking away, but I had to. This was pushing into here, and I was like, okay, the amplitude should be higher, but it won't if I'm causing friction here, right? So <clears throat> that is the truth. So, first thing I want to do is put the second hand in, which shouldn't be too hard. I just usually push that down with my uh, tweezers, actually. But. but I'll be a good boy this time. I'll push it straight down here. There we go. I think that's as far as it goes down. As far as it needs to go down. And then the hour hand goes down. I just have to make sure that it goes in straight. I don't have to worry about where it's, how it's configured as it goes in because I'm able to just move that around after. I just make sure it goes in properly. And I'll check it from the, from the sides too. I get rid of my spongy there so I can bring this down without any interference. Yeah. I think that's all the way down. It's funny how high these hands sit up eh, compared to other watches. Yeah, that's, that's good right there. I don't think I need to tilt that downward. Let me have a look here closer. And tilt it down just a bit. This gives a little more real estate for the other hand, and I think there's plenty of room on the other side. So now when I pull this out again, this is a tough one to pull out, though. Get a good grip. Now oh, that's moving around nicely now. That's not causing the force it was causing before. So now I just have to check the clearance here to make sure I got no issues with clearance. It looks pretty good. I think that second hand can go down a little further actually. <clears throat> Let me see if I can push that second hand down a little further. It it unnerves me a bit, but only because of that fourth pivot wheel and you don't want to press too hard on that. So that's down as about as low as it'll go. I think that's almost scraping. I'll let this thing go around and see if there's any issues. Because that is low, baby. Yeah. The rear of that hand is super low. Yeah, of course, somehow I stopped the watch. Let me just have a look at this on the other side to see if there's no issues here. I'm not sure if this watch is going to naturally overbank. Hopefully not. Oh, i got a tear in my glove. I hope there's no radiation around here. Yeah, 
Yeah, look at that, it overbanked again. So I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to fix that issue. So I can give Buddy a discount or something because I don't think I can fix the overbanking issue on this watch. That would be very difficult. Let me see here. Now, let me see, can I lift that up to get it from overbanking? Oh, fun in the sun, folks. Fun in the sun. Yeah, these watches from these days, back in the day, they would overbank. And I'm not sure exactly how I can resolve that overbanking issue with this particular pocket watch. If it tends to want to overbank. I'll have to look that up. There's likely a solution of some sort, but I'm not sure what it is. <clears throat> so it's in place again. This is a, not an overbanking problem, actually. It's a problem where the jewel gets on the other side, and, and effectively the double roller prevents that. And that's why they did double rollers on pocket watches, to prevent from that from happening. Well, it obviously it happened when I played with the second hand, so I stopped the motion and it jumped to the other side. I'll have a look and see if there's a way of adjusting maybe the banking pins to prevent that from happening. There we go. It's ticking away again. This is working quite well though, so I'm fairly happy with the, the hand placement. The second hand is lower now, so that's very good. Um, I'll put the minute hand on now, and then I'll let this thing run overnight. Now, I did that last time, and there were no issues, so. Uh, let me see, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? Get two tweezers out, maybe? get my tool out. One of them is bigger than the other one. And if I just go down here a bit and then push it over like that. Now I want to make sure it's got I've got room as I put the hand down. Pretty good there. I got real estate. And now what I want to do is watch 
I'm just going to put this hand like this and then watch to make sure the hand moves. So I just put it like in some position. I could put it at 12 o'clock, but I'll just put it right there at the 15 mark. And then I want to watch that hand as it goes around to make sure it's moving. And it's funny, you can just keep an eye on it and you can see it move. Yep, it's moving. So you can just see it clearing the square there, which means the cannon pinion is not too loose and it's not too tight. It's working perfectly. So there's no problem there. I'm going to look over, I'm going to look up the banking pin adjustments because I may have to do some adjustments of the banking pins to make sure that they, uh, it doesn't <coughs> over, um, over bank. And this is so when the pallet fork swings one way and pushes the impulse jewel around this way, right? It's swinging this way and it's staying there. And then as it comes back around, it's grabbing here and then coming around and staying there. If for some reason it doesn't stay there, like if you're, if the, if it doesn't go over far enough or if the banking pin is too tight in here, it might snap back. And then when it comes back here, it hits the side of the fork, the mouth of the pallet fork, which causes the watch to actually not, uh, to, to overbank. I think it's called. I'm not sure if it's called overbanking or not, but I can't remember the name. Anyway, it causes it to get jammed up on one side. I've had that happen many times, especially on these old watches that didn't have double double rollers. Eh? So the double rollers on the Hamiltons were perfect because they allowed for that to happen, and there was never an issue. So I'm going to set the time on this thing as well. And what time is it right now? It's three seven minutes after three. But let me see, in my digital watch, it's about seven minutes after three. So perfect. So I can set the time, pull this out again. This sleeve on this is, well, that was pretty good. Seven minutes after three. So three, oh, seven, like that. Right. Yeah, and I'll do a little research on, on how to do that. How to put that in place back or put how to make sure it doesn't uh, get on the impulse tool doesn't get on the other side of the pallet fork do a little bit of research but i think it's an adjustment of the banking pins uh, i'm not absolutely sure uh, if that's going to help it or not but that's it so that's my video for today so thanks a lot for watching uh, we're back into watch repair and watch repair videos uh, if you appreciate me, me making watch repair videos please Hit like, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed to my channel. I've almost got 10,000 viewers. I need, I need to beat Chris Spinner here somehow. I'm not sure how I'll do it, but I need to beat him somehow. Um, <clears throat> so I'm looking for more subscribers. Please send it around. Get your, your mom to subscribe. Get your wife and kids to subscribe. Everybody should be subscribing. And look at that. I got a Chernobyl problem with my glove. If that radiation gets in, I'm screwed. See, look at that. I'm going to throw this glove away. <laughs> anyway, thanks again, and I'll catch you later.